Alrighty, so let's give you guys a little bit of an update here. You can see I've got this car completely ripped apart. I've got stuff everywhere. It looks terrible. Um, but yeah, I learned something today and figured I would share it with you. So taking the pistons and rods out, the rod bearings, they looked okay. There were a couple that were a little scratchy and this car has always had weird oil pressure issues. I can never really figure it out. I did upgrade to the big oil pump and that helped a ton and it was good for like half the year and then at the end of the year things got much worse and I put in 2050 and it got slightly better um, but yeah things just got a little bit weird at the end there I couldn't figure it out so I took the crank out and you can see the mains like I thought this half of the mains they looked okay somewhere on the thrust bearing which I originally I thought this was a thrust issue and I owe everything I'm going to tell you to the sloppy mechanics Facebook group but when I pulled the caps off wow you can see that thrust cap is really bad whereas the other ones don't look so bad you can see there's a bit of gold on these edges um, so it totally makes sense once we, you know, once I heard a few comments from people that this is actually the crank flexing and this is what it looks like. So you can imagine um, if we were looking at the top of the engine here, if the crank is flexing, especially in the center pushing down, it's pushing down really hard in the center and touching these two edges and just eating that bearing. So that's what happened. And you know, I go back, I look at my measurements, which were with plastic gauge. So this is a higher mileage motor. How many miles, who knows? Um, but I look at my measurements and they were all on the loose side with plastic gauge. Um, and so ultimately, was it an installation issue for me? Possibly, but really, I think we just kind of found the limits of the stock crank. So, you know, near the end of the season there, we were, you know, between 20 and 25 pounds of boost with that S480 right there. And uh, I'm not sure horsepower wise, but we were over a thousand pounds per hour on E85 measured in the Holly. I think when we dynoed it, we were at like 850 pounds per hour. And that was 720 wheel horsepower, call it. The car was still spinning on the dyno. So we were putting belt dressing on it. So. I mean, I would say we're definitely over a thousand horsepower flywheel. I mean, a thousand fifty pounds on E85, like I would think, has got to be over nine hundred wheel. But um, I don't know; it's, it's impossible to know without ever having dynoed it. So, yeah, really, that's it, guys. I just wanted to show you what this looks like, and I'm actually super happy. Well, first off, I'm impressed that that turbo was able to bend the crank. And second off, I'm really happy that I actually took this engine apart and was able to determine what was uh, what was the source of this oil pressure issue because it felt like I was chasing my tail. And uh, I've kind of learned that sometimes when it feels like you're chasing your tail, it can it can be something much much different. So in this case, I would say catastrophic. The engine still ran good, still had good oil pressure, and surprisingly, the filter was actually really clean. It wasn't full of metal. Like I literally just cut this filter open before I put the car back here um, and it didn't like I didn't really see any copper or anything. It looked like kind of every other LS filter that I've ever cut. So you can tell there's going to be big things on the way. Uh, we're going to do a forged crank, obviously forged pistons and rods and maybe I, I may stud the bottom end. We'll see how that works out. Obviously get new bearings throughout. We're gonna hold all the cylinders up, uh, but I'm just gonna take it to a machine shop at this point because um, I really wanna make sure it's good this time. So they have the proper tools to measure all the bearings correctly. Like I'm just using plastic gauge, but you know, I guess at this level, it's it's probably hit or miss doing that. So like if you're making like 600 wheel, it's probably not an issue, but if I'm trying to make 1200, 1300 wheel, it's definitely, definitely a little more important now. So we'll do that. Um, I've also got transmission out. We're going to be putting a trans brake in that. Uh, I don't know how much of this stuff I'm going to video. If any of you guys actually want to see it, I could. But I have so many videos just putting together LS engines and stuff that I don't really think this is that particularly interesting to you. But uh, if for some reason it is interesting and there's something you guys want to know, then by all means, let me know. One other big thing we're going to be upgrading is this oil pan. Uh, I can watch my data logs and 
you know, on the foot brake, we were making maybe 65 pounds of oil pressure. And as soon as I launched, that would drop down to like 55 and it would kind of sustain 55 for the whole run, not moving around a lot. Um, and I think part of that has to do with there being no baffling in this pan. So we're gonna spend the money, unfortunately, and actually get a baffled pan. Like I'm just at the point in my life where when I put this together this time, I would like it to be able to kind of just last with a freshen up every once in a while. So I think at this power level, that's kind of where we're at. I know there's a lot of people out there who have better success than I do, but all in all, um, I can't say I'm disappointed. Like to be able to go out and bang out 950s and probably could have even gone faster. Probably even, I think it had a 30 in it. You know, with, with the stock bottom end motor, that's like, to me, that's absolutely insane. The, car has so much power it's always trying to kill you so um it's definitely a great setup i was very happy with the stock bottom end stuff while it lasted um but now i think we're we got to move on from that so um yeah if any of you guys out there ever wondered what a flexing crankshaft looks like on the bearings that's what it looks like i didn't know that so hopefully you didn't know that and uh, maybe you learned something today so as always guys thanks for checking out the channel i really appreciate all your support um, if you guys have any suggestions for videos, anything you want to see, just let me know. I'm always, I'm always up to upload stuff. I just feel like sometimes I'm boring you guys. Um, but yeah, we will uh, see you on the next one.